Hello everyone, Joanne with StampingInTheValley.com and welcome to my craft room. Grab a cup of coffee or some tea and have a seat. We are going to make this cuckoo clock card today. It is interactive. I have been dying to play with this ever since I got it in, into this craft room. Look at that little door and it says, hello you. Isn't that cute? So we are going to go over how to make this today. How much fun is that? Now, um, this is definitely a project card, guys. If you don't like a project, this might not be the stamp set for you. I happen to love projects because I get the most creativity out of them. But let's talk about some specials. Until the end of this month, just to the end of this month, if you want to become a demonstrator, and all of my girls on my team are crafting demonstrators. They don't make a business out of anything. They are um, hobby demonstrators. They like to get the discount. I'm not a pushy salesperson either, so I just kind of let you guys glide through and have fun. Um, so... Um, and then we, I do have a special Facebook page for us, uh, just the demonstrators that are under me. And then you also receive my card kits every month as a thank you uh, for being on my team. These are the card kits for this month. So if you're a downline, a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, or you place an order, these are the two card kits you will receive this month. It's about to run out. It's almost the end of the month. I change them every month. This month they are... Um, um, fancy fold cards actually that you will get and there's a video that um, is right in the description below the product list now it is below the product list I'm starting to add a product list to the bottom of all of my videos here uh, to help you guys um, so uh, what I was saying about the special with Stampin' Up if you become a demonstrator, it's $99. You get to pick $155 worth of product. Isn't that wonderful? Free shipping. I think you are still receiving a free paper pumpkin box uh, kit in the, um, in the starter kit. I think that's going on. Um, then you get 20% off. You get to pre-order right away from the holiday catalog. Now, the holiday catalog will launch September 4th, is it? Yes. I believe, and um, which is wonderful, but uh, I've had a few people sign up under me, and they are really having fun ordering from the holiday catalog a month early. So that would be something that you might want to consider. Also, it's a fantastic time, like I say, to sign up because of the special of $155 worth of product. You pick it out in the catalog, um, and you know you can make your starter kit whatever you want. And, um, and you also get free shipping with that kit that comes to your house. So um, a great time to sign up. Like I said, it's just $99. If you're thinking about on September 4th, if you're thinking about spending $100, honest to goodness, think about becoming a demonstrator, even if it's just for this holiday season, just for the three months, um, you know, uh, so you would get a great discount. This is a great time to sign up. Um, I have people drop on and off all the time and then pick up the specials again. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, just how, to me, everything is happy crafting. And just however that you could get the most bang for your buck uh, is what I like people to enjoy about crafting. And this is wonderful product. Now, let's talk about this. If you don't like to order Stampin' Up! product, you might like my Happy Crafting Card Kit class. This class is $25, and you get four different designs. This will run out at the end of the month. Um, so you get two of each card. You get two kits of each card. This one is a fancy fold this month. And then um, so is this one. This is a fancy fold with a little belly band. All right, so you get two of each. It's $25 um, that they, with free shipping. Just email me at joannemaddy at outlook.com and um, I will be happy to send you an invoice or I take a personal check or a money order. Um, and then the last thing is, uh, what was the last thing? The paper share. Yes, the paper share. I have four or uh, three paper shares left. They are $37.50. And again, just email me at joannemaddie at outlook.com. Um, and I will be sending invoices out uh, very shortly. So I just have three paper shares left. 
and um, if you would like to reserve one just shoot me an email so let's talk finally about this card uh, our base is thick whisper white cardstock at 11 by four and a quarter scored at five and a half and then your first layer is crumb cake and I've run that through the brick embossing folder. Look at how wonderful that brick is. I love that. This one, I didn't ink up the brick to make it, you know, a little, um, I don't know, weathered. But I think when we start to put this one together, we will ink this up just to get a little bit of a different look to it. Uh, so, but this piece is five and a quarter by four. And then I cut the largest stitched framelit out. And this is so saffron. And from the, um, the dies from the Cuckoo Clock set, I cut this little circle out of gold foil paper. Okay, so I use these stitch-shaped framelits, the largest circle. All right, we'll be back in a minute, and we're going to start to put this card together. First, what I wanted to do was go ahead and ink this up. And um, I wanted to show you this embossing folder. It's one of the new ones the 3D. And now what I'm going to do is just take a sponge right here. These sponges come in a round disc and I cut them into six pieces like a pie. I put the sponge into the crumb cake and I'm going to come around and I'm going to flick these edges nicely. Giving It will give this piece just some dimension and solid dimension coming around the edges of it like this. And this is, um, for a better term, called flicking, as you can see. So I just want to get that nice and heavy around that edge. Nice and dark and heavy. See how nice that is? Okay, let me get a piece of scrap paper. All right. This is just some computer paper. And I'm going to take this and um, my little sponge, and I'm going to tap it off all the time because you want to get that initial ink off of it. Then you want to come over the top of this and just as light, not a lot of pressure, and it will highlight... the bricks that are standing up, that are more predominant. And just continue to go over it, tapping it off every time. Because that takes that initial ink off of it, and you don't want a blob on your project. This is coming out so beautifully. Do you see how the bricks are getting highlighted? Isn't that fun? Sorry, I might have been a little bit off camera there. Let's not get ink on that, right? So here we go. We're just, then this is plenty. Just going to go ahead and smooth around and soften those lines of the ink. And I just love that look. I love that look. Okay, let's close this. Now, let's go ahead and attach this to our card base. Make sure I'm going the right way there. Move that out of the way. Now, we want to use some Tombow because this has embossing on it. When everything's are raised up like that, you want a good liquid glue so that it gets in all of the little nooks and crannies. Like I said at the beginning of this video, grab a cup of coffee or tea or whatever. We might be on here a little bit because, you know, the cuckoo clock is interactive, so there's steps to it. Okay, we're going the right way there. <laughs> and now I'm going to place this down and have my nice white border around. And as you can see, as this is inked, it allows it, again, to lift it off of the white just a little bit without then adding um, another piece of cardstock behind it. You know, if you wanted to do that, you could, but you would, you know, use a whole piece of cardstock and maybe some early espresso. 
and that measurement then if you wanted to do that and not ink it up that measurement would be five and three eighths by four and one eighth if you wanted to add that little skinny border around there but I really wanted to work with some ink because I think it's just kind of classic with this cuckoo clock okay so now let's move this out of the way actually what we can do now also I was into kind of getting as many pieces together um, as I could at first before we started into everything take your circle and go ahead and again this tombow this down because we're adhering onto the brick and you want to bring it kind of like up to the upper third upper two-thirds of the page right about there and center it okay now we'll move this out of the way I still have my little gold circle here that I cut out but now what we're going to do is bring in the Stamparatus. Any positioning uh, device would be fine. And we have these hinges. If you've never seen our Stamparatus, um, we have what's called a hinge technique. And um, sometimes, you know, if you're doing something in succession, you can just detach the hinges and move them down. You can also use this plate. You can mount something on this side. You can flip it, mount something here. You get uh, two plates, so you actually get four sides because then you have your... Um, your uh, slots up here and you can mount here you can put you can put a stamp here pull it out flip it over and put a stamp here so if you're doing like triple or double stamping this is also a wonderful um, apparatus for that but whatever um, whatever um, positioning device you have I forgot to show you the stamp set whatever positioning device you have this would be a good time to use it we are going to do this uh, clock right here cuckoo for you and it comes with the um, the cuckoo clock dies and there is this is the interactive one of the bunch right there okay and we're going to go through a lot of things on how to use this. I'm going to break it down for you. Um, sometimes uh, sets like this get a little intimidating for people, but you shouldn't be. I'm going to break it down for you to where, you know, you're going to get this and you're going to have so much fun putting it together. And um, someone very special, maybe, you know, you would want to give this type of a card to. I'm going to place my clock here. This piece is um, a piece of Whisper White that I cut into quarters. So I cut it at five and a half, then I cut it at four and a quarter. So I actually get four pieces of um, Whisper White paper and it's gonna be able, I do believe, to cut out and stamp most of this. The reason why I'm using the foam pad here is because we're on photopolymer. I, want, I positioned my stamp flat side up toward me. I'm going to close my door and pick up my stamp just like that all right now um, what I also wanted to say was under here sometimes when you ink up on these because the door does go down you get a little play in it just take your stamp set and put it under there it gives you a nice flat surface you, we want to get the tuxedo memento black ink because then we're going to be coloring with our blends so you want to take your house and ink it up And then you want to close the door. Press it down. Lift it up. Now see, that could be a little crisper right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and ink this up again. And now I'm going to close the door. And I'm going to press. And now I have a nice solid black image. I love that. Now my other images, let's just go with those. Um, I'm going to be able to then stamp around here. Now you could put all of your images on here and continue to stamp. Um, you know, it's like, um, let me say this. I went to do that. Let me show you something. Wait. Let me show you. Okay. Here we go. Here's a prime example. Um, 
I went to stamp because I needed more here but I didn't need more on the door. I thought about the bunny at first, but then I switched to the squirrel because it's fall and I like the little nut he was carrying. And then um, this little chain right here, I didn't need more ink on them. I realized that I just needed more ink on the clock. That's why I'm just doing that, okay? And um, I'll be back in just a moment. I'm gonna mount all the little stamps that we need and we're gonna stamp around here. And I'll show you how to get the most out of your paper. Be back in just a moment. Okay, well, I've still got this in the Stamparatus. I wanna go ahead and do a little bit more stamping with what I need. Um, so I'm j I mounted them on clear blocks and I, want I need a door. So I'm going to um, ink that up and just stamp a little door right here down and up now see how much thinner these lines are I want to show this to you okay then on this one that I had to stamp a couple of times I didn't want that okay so that's why that I switched but I have a foam mat here so I was okay with just going to the blocks I need two pull chains so I'm just going to get these guys right in here. Ooh, I missed it. Okay, that's okay. Let's do this. We might need another piece of paper now. It's okay. One, and then two. We're good. Ah, I missed it again. It's because I'm behind the camera. No big deal. No biggie. Let's go right there. Okay, so we'll use these two up here, no problem. I want to take my little bird, and I want my little bird in my house right here. I am going to pull this down, guys, because that, this I got one shot at, right? So just excuse me while I pull this right here. And his little feet, oh, he's so cute. Oh, and he's perfect. Oh, he's right in his little house. Isn't that cute, the little cuckoo? Okay, hmm? how sweet. Now, the reason why I left this strip here is let me show you with the framelits. I'm going to, when I run things through the Big Shot, I'm going to take this one right here. This is a score line. I'm going to take this and put it right here. It just needs to be white. It doesn't need to be, that's pretty good, it doesn't need to be um, inked at this time. I'm also going to cut out the door here okay but I'm going to cut another plain white door that's important to know right there uh, you there is a I'm gonna of course use the house framelit for that um, and I have the framelit for uh, we got to I have to stamp my squirrel don't I where's that little guy let's see did I put him back in here we'll get him right out and stamp him right quick yeah here he is he's really cute um, I will tell you this much in the holiday catalog, the new holiday catalog coming out, there is something that coordinates with this set. So if you have this set, how much fun is that? Now I already know I have enough room up here and I'm going to stamp my little... Oh, so cute, my little squirrel holding his little nut right there. Perfect. So let's see, now I need the chain for this. I have my squirrel. I have my door. I, or it gives you a circle right here. And that's what I did the gold um, little dot with right here. This gold dot right up there. I did with this circle. Um, and then uh, at first I thought that you could um, stamp because there is a stamp for the um, hands of the clock but the best thing to do with that I think because I want them interactive and I want them to spin I'm going to add a brad is to take this and just punch that out of um, run it through the big shot with just some black so that's what I'm going to use <laughs> they, they jump onto the magnets don't they <laughs> okay uh, now you get you also get this mechanism here and I'm going to get bring the big shot in in just a minute and I'm going to show you exactly what to do with this piece and how to line this up. You also do get, if you wanted to in, uh, make your little birds stand out a little bit, you get a framelit for that. Isn't that fun? 
because I could have stamped him on another piece and then put him right here in the door also. So that sounds like a lot of fun too. Why did my camera just move, right? Okay, I'll be back in just a minute and I'm going to bring the big shot in. Okay, here we go with this next step. Um, now we're going to cut everything out. I'm going to take my little um, chain here and put it on one of these. Now, I want you to realize that with the new dies from Stampin' Up, you are not supposed to see a white border around anything. There's supposed to be a black line. If you see white, you don't have it lined up properly. So, but you still get a white border. So I'm going to put this down with washi tape. I'm going to take my little door here. And again, I just want to see a black line. Again, with washi tape, just to hold it in place. Now, um, what I'm going to do, because I've got to come back through and run this again, um, I'm going to, I want to work on this house right now. Again, no white showing, just the black line. I'm going to take some washi tape. I'm going to tape this down. And now, I'm going to take this little, um, die right here. There's a slot and there's two hearts. Okay, When you look on the back then this cuts into the bottom of the paper. The hearts don't cut out. They're to help you line things up. This is positioned like this just because it is lining you up with the roof. You want to place this inside and you want to look at your hearts. The, if you line up the hearts you basically have it this is going to cut the slot here for your mechanism to go through and be properly lined up. So it's very very important that this piece be spot on. I'm going to put two pieces of washi tape on this piece. Whoop! I just moved my house, right? I think I did. Okay, right there. We're good. Alright, here we go. This should sit right in there. See, I'm almost tempted to put my squirrel, right? Can I get him in there? Oh, I can. Okay. I was going to wait for him and get him with the others. Because I need to cut one of these out and another door. But let's see, if I could get this little guy, that would be great. I don't know. that. Mm, that's a little close. I'm going to just wait on that not be impatient with that. And let's see, we have that good. I see a little white there. I'm going to move that down. All right, now here we go. Put my, yes, that is beautiful. Nope. I saw it move. I think I need another piece of washi tape. That's what I think. Okay, I'm going to, let me get another piece. Right here. Right there. Okay? Like I said, this is a project. This is nothing. Um, when I do a project, this is something that, like, it's a rainy Saturday afternoon here. And this is a perfect afternoon to do something like this with you guys. Because it takes time. The coloring takes time. The cutting out takes time. But it's a great day to be in the craft room, right? Sometimes I have to, you know, look for, you know, I don't, don't have, we're not going to be outside. We're not, you know, it's not one of those days. And I have to look for a day like that to go ahead and do a project like this with you guys. So let's remove this. And I'm just excited about this. So perfect. Look at that. That lines up perfect. And it allows this to have a slot. And then I have a little cutout piece right down here don't know if you can kind of see that. It's just kind of slotted so that um, our mechanism uh, that we're going to cut right here is going to go through. Okay, so that's number one right there. And we have a door that's stamped. That's good. We're going to need another door. Put that right back on. And now we have one of our pull chains right here. Ugh, came out so cute. And now I'm going to bring this one over here to the one that we like stamped, right? And again, no white showing. 
just a dark line. Love that. Kind of scooch that over a little bit. We're going to come up here and put this one on our squirrel with his little nut because it's fall. This is something that I really like about this little set is um, it takes a lot of the um, seasons. You know, you have the little bunny rabbit, you have the squirrel, you have a deer, you have a tree, and then um, there's a little stamp for the leaf that I'm, I'm going to use, and I thought that that was kind of fall-like, so I really appreciated that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to take this piece, okay, this piece, and I'm going to fit it right here. And this is how I got everything out of just a quarter of a piece of Whisper White. Okay, so can you see that? I've got that right there. And this is taped down. We're taped. We're good. Let's put our plate over top and slide this through. Nicely. Very, very nice. All right. I'm excited. Very excited. We'll go over that in just a moment. So now in my little pile over here, I have my plain white door and two of my pull chains. Very nice. And my little friend, a little squirrel. Now, do you see what I'm saying about the dies? Um, when you line it up, you're only to see black, but there is still the white border around there. And everything is a die. There's no framelits and no thinlets. Everything is just a die, just simplified, okay? Love that. So I'm going to put that in my little pile here. And let's see. We did our mechanism, so that's good. And I've already cut out, um, out of some black, I already cut out the hands. So I know that I'm done there. And now I have this nice little piece here. And this is our mechanism. Let's talk about this for just a moment. There is a line right here, a score line. That's exactly what you want to do. Fold it back. Fold it back. This is to make it stiffer. All right. Now what I want you to do is take some Tombow, make sure you have this nice, and do not load the Tombow up in this little trough, guys. I promise you, it will make such a sticky mess, and the little element will get sticky, and you, you don't want that because I've already had to make it again because mine got really sticky. So I'm taking, I found out three dots into that little trough, and then I'm taking my tip and I'm just kind of pushing it to the edge, that dot, just pushing it up into the paper, not squeezing out any more glue. Just like that, honest to goodness, this is plenty. Um, let me just move this up. Let's see, you can't see, can you? Let's get this out of the way. All right, let's put that right there. Move this big shot. Okay. Here we go. Now I'm going to get my bone folder and I'm going to burnish this down and I don't want any glue really squishing out at all because you don't, I found out, you don't want to get this little piece sticky. Just like that. Perfect. Now, um, you could do this next step, you could have done this either way. You could have done it when it was flat and open. I find that I got a better stamp. This is the stamp that has the arrow, the arrow pointing up. I found that I was able, actually off camera, I was able to line this better if I had just this, okay? So I'm going to hold it down. I'm going to bring it like, I don't know, an eighth of an inch up, and I'm going to stamp this on our mechanism just like that and see how I got a perfect little stamp down here we're gonna take our gold circle not yet we're gonna but that will attach down there but not yet okay don't do that yet it I always get to the point to where I'm like okay I'll finish it no don't you we have to thread this after we color you don't want to put anything on here until we color this. And then this is going to thread through 
without bending it, it's going to thread. And then um, we're going to have our little pull thing down here and we're going to attach our gold circle. So well, I'll be back in a minute. Let me get all of my blends, clear this up, and we'll go on to the next stage of coloring. Now what I want to do is take care of some of the inside of the card. I'm going to use the sentiment, time spent with friends is time well spent. Isn't that true? Love that. So I'm going to stamp the inside of this. Try to get that in the middle. Perfect. And then I'm going to use this little leaf that came in the stamp set with my So Saffron. Which is kind of cute. And put it in the corner here and in the corner here. So now our inside is complete. And I'm going to bring my envelope in and do the same thing. Just like that. There's our envelope. We're going to move that aside. All right, now what we're going to do is start to color a few things. And that's why I put my grid paper here. Let me get this black off of my fingers. I got a little bit on the back side of that envelope, but we're going to have to be okay with that. And I'm going to bring in my pull chains. And I have my light crumb cake here. And I'm going to go ahead and color the entire, both the pull chains with the light crumb cake. And I'm just going to come up here and color these, the chain itself. I also thought that bronze might do well on these chains. I think I used that for something else. What did I use the bronze for? Oh, the top of the nut. Okay, so this is all light crumb cake here. Anytime that you lay down more color with alcohol markers, the color gets darker. So I'm going to go back over these dots again with the light. And that's all I'm doing with the blunt tip is dotting. I'm letting the alcohol spread out. All right, now I want to go ahead and do a little blending on the side. So I'm going to take the brush tip and I'm going to go just into some of these. Just a few on that side. And that's it. I'm I'm going to take the light crumb cake again and blend it out. Just like that. So let's do this again. I'm going to take the blunt tip, not the brush tip, the thinner one, and I'm going to color each and every one of these and really I'm just dabbing, I'm just dotting and laying a little, let the color bleed out and you've got the Tuxedo Memento Black ink there so it's going to hold that color in. Nothing's going to, you know, completely bleed right out of the page or out of your project I should say. Then I'm going to color all of this with the light crumb cake Now look at the difference in the two. Can I, let me show you that. The finished one and the one that just has the light crumb cake on it, the one that's not shaded and the one that's shaded, and then has another layer on it. You can really see that difference. Right here. I'm going to take the dark crumb cake and I'm going to come over here. And then, I, I forgot to go back over these dots. I want to make those just a little bit darker with the light crumb cake, a second coat of your light crumb cake. 
and then I'm going to switch to the brush tip because I want to blend this down here. If you hear the birds and, and hear wind or whatever, it is a beautiful coming close to fall day here in Upper East Tennessee, and I have the window open in the craft room. I love that. Okay, so we're done with these little guys. Let's move those aside. And let's talk about our little mechanism here. The first thing that this little mechanism gets on the front side of it, where the arrow is, is the door that you stamped. I'm going to color this with light crumb cake. And I'm going to color the whole, the entire door with light crumb cake. Not crumb cake. What am I talking? Cherry cobbler. <laughs> You're like, that does not look like crumb cake to me. Light cherry cobbler. Then, on these lines, and I'm going to use the skinny tip, I'm going to come down these lines just with this dark cherry cobbler. No blending at all. That's it. It just gives it just a little bit of definition. We're good. Let me pick this up. If I can, here we go. I wanted you to see that. And I need a little bit right there, right? Because you want all the edges of this. You don't want any white showing. Just like that. And down here, too. Good. Now, this will now get adhered to the front where the arrow is. With, and I mean, a small amount of Tombow. Small amount. One dot, and I take my tip and I spread it. I do not continually add glue as I'm spreading it. Now you're going to take your door, and I watch this. See the line down here where the, let me point, right here, the bottom of this? That is exactly where you want your door to come. Not below it, not to the top of these little um, tabs that stick out. To the bottom of that is where you want it. Look at the back and make sure that you have it equally spaced and right to the bottom. This again is why you want to use your Tombow. You don't want it to extend down into that notched area. You see? Do not let it extend into the notched area. All right, so this is how the mechanism is going to go. Just like that, okay? Then when it's going to flop in this way, it's going to fold down that way. All right, flip it over, take your door and hold your door upside down like this with the rounded part toward the bottom. Get your Tuxedo Memento Black Ink and stamp your hello. Where is that? Right here. The hello you. Flat to the top, all right? Rounded to the bottom. Stamp your hello you. So that it looks like this. Let that focus. All right, just like that. Then take your Tombow and do the same thing a one dot and spread it around. Your hello you is looking this way, all right? You'll understand this, I promise, when it gets in there. And now we're going to attach this so that it matches up equally with that door, the front of the front part. Make making sure right here that when you flip it over, you do not see any white into that notched area just like that. No white in the notched area. I had to scooch mine up a little bit. I did have to scooch it. Alright? 
So basically when you turn it over, your hello you is upside down. But your door is looking at you and in the right position with the arrow up. Okay, this is a very important part of this clock to make it um, work pr properly. So that's the front side with the arrow up and the door. And here's the back side with nothing and the hello you is upside down. That's normal. Let's move that to the side. And let's bring in our little um, uh, squirrel. And I want a little flirty flamingo, dark flirty flamingo for his nose. He's got to have a little pink nose. Just like that. And I'm going to use my light crumb cake uh, for him. And for him, I'm not going to do... Oh, did I just pull out the dark crumb cake? I did. Okay, well, this little guy is going to be dark crumb cake. The other little guy was light crumb cake. So I'm just going to color... inside the, that looks cute, the Tuxedo Memento Black Ink and his little tail here turn him and just I'm just doing one coat. I'm not blending anything for him. Out here on his little paw. And around the top of the nut. Because I found, I like the, um, the bronze color for the top of the nut. And then I did the bottom of it in So Saffron. I went just a little bit outside the lines right here on his leg. Try to push that back up in there and it does that perfectly. I'm going to take my, um, this is Dark Daffodil Delight. Is that what I used? I thought I used Dark So Saffron. Well, here, well, let's just use this Dark Daffodil Delight for the bottom of the nut because it's just what I had out. You can make it any color because we're crafting. You can make it Highland Heather if you want to. And now the bronze on the top. Well, I kind of like that dark Daffodil Delight there. Oh, he's adorable. He is just so sweet. Okay, let's look at that up close. Here's my little squirrel. And he's carrying his nuts for the winter. So we'll put him aside. He's in good shape. That's in good shape. Now we're going to bring our house in. And we're going to start to color. And I am going to use the dark crumb cake for this for sure. And I want to color my, um, like the straight part of the roof here and the house in dark crumb cake. This is just some straight line coloring. And you can make this any color you want. This is just what I'm doing. Just like that. And here. A lot of people I've seen have just been coloring the whole entire house. I've left some of it white on this project, not to say I'm going to do it like that on another one, right? Because when you've got blends in your hands, you can do whatever you want. When it's your crafting project, you could color it any color you would like. Okay, now I'm going to come around the center of the clock. And out here. And I'm using that nice tight tip, the skinnier the line right there. And now these little dots right here, 
I'm going to do in my dark crumb cake. Any dots that I see right there and down here. My crumb cake. Just like that. So cute. So cute. Alright, now I'm going to take my Dark Daffodil Delight, color the inside of my flowers. My little bird's upper wing, his beak, cute, mm, adorable. This is light balmy blue, light balmy blue. I'm going to do, I think I better use the skinny tip, down here, my shelf for my cuckoo clock. So while I'm coloring this, like I was saying in the beginning of the video, if you are thinking about ordering $100 worth of product at the beginning of September, you might want to think about becoming a demonstrator, whether it be with me or someone else, doesn't matter, just here to help you guys save money. Um, when you're crafting and enjoy your crafting and all the perks that then come with uh, being a demonstrator. You get access to a lot of different things when you're um, a demonstrator. All the updates and all the in, ins and outs of what's going on. That's a lot of fun. Um, but yes, if you are thinking about that, you will save 20% right off. And I've got a few people in my, on my team that have promoted up to Bronze Elite um, just by ordering on their own. And now they are saving 25% with every order. So that's nice. And if you are a member of my team, I do these um, weekly videos. I'm going to use Light Cherry Cobbler now. I do these weekly videos on um, my Happy Crafting Corner page, Facebook page. That's just for my team. I'm doing the hearts and just a little doodads around. So, and if you don't do Facebook, um, that's okay. Right here, too, on his little collar I'm going to make red. Um, if you don't do Facebook, that's okay because... I will email you, I have a few people that don't, and I will email you those videos every week so that you get them too. Making little red flowers here. Boy, this red, you got to be careful with this red, guys. Whoo! Because it'll just wind up going everywhere. I am barely touching the paper with the tip. And honest, it's just like two or three dots, and I've got this filled in. What a gorgeous breeze is coming through there. Now, isn't that pretty? We are really making something out of this and having a wonderful, at least I'm having a wonderful conversation with you guys. I want my little blue bird, my little bird to be blue. So, I have been talking to you guys about this craft um, show. Also, a little info about this. A little dark crumb cake on the feet. Um, and around him. Uh, about this craft show. And I have not signed up with it yet. And I'm wondering if I have the time to make all the product that I need to. Um, so that has been a little bit of a concern of mine here recently. So we'll see. I haven't committed to it yet. Oop, went outside the lines. Oop. <laughs> so we use, this is a, um, if you're not familiar, this is a color lifter. And actually what it does is take the ink and push it back in on the other side of the Tuxedo Memento Black ink. I have to admit, whenever I've used that with red, it doesn't work well, guys. The red, 
just bleeds into it and then it bleeds out into it. So if I go out, out of the lines with the red, sometimes I just have to be like, uh, okay with it. I just have a little bit of a white spot there. Okay, there's that. Now, this is Granny Apple Green, the light Granny Apple Green. And I'm going to come through and do all of this um, floral looking spray on this clock. Just like this. Oh, I just love this. I think the Granny Apple Green, when I add it, can you see it just making this come alive? I might be kind of far away for you guys. I don't know. Let me come around through here. We're good here. Really, just some very light coloring. Nothing dramatic. Nothing too difficult with this. Just a small space. We're good. Ah, uh, I love it. And we're done. Done, done, done. Okay, good. Now, what we want to do is add, now we want to add our um, bread and our hands to the clock. Let me hold this up. Didn't that come out cute? Oh, I forgot to do my roof. I have to have a red roof. I just saw that. So light uh, cherry cobbler, and we're just going to go into these little triangles here. Oh, just makes it. And of course you can make your roof whatever color you want. You can make your entire clock whatever color you want. Some of this too I got from the catalog. So a lot of times when I start with a project and I don't know what to do, I just start looking into the catalog and be like, oh, okay, they did this. Let me let me start with that, and then I go to here, and then, uh, you know, all of a sudden, we have our own creation. There. We're going to say we're good. Cute. Now I'm going to bring in my foam mat real quick, and uh, my little, you can use your pick quick tool. And I just make a hole in that center. Or if you have, you know, a paper piercing tool like that. Whatever to make a little hole in the center there. And I'm going to take my hands to the clock. Place it here. And then I have a brad. And I'm going to put it through the hands. Through the hole it's already provided. When you run it through the big shot and then just spread it out in the back. And this is interactive too. Isn't that cool? Okay, now is the part that I, that I really wanted to show you. Take your mechanism here and your house. Thread this through here. Go like left and right with these little notches, one side and then the other. Now, don't try not to bend this back here. Well, wait a minute. Shouldn't have went through with the notches yet. Take the notches out. Okay. Before you put the notches in, take this and don't bend it hard. That's why you have to do it first. Thread it through that bottom slot. All right? That's what we're going to do. Now that comes through. Now put your notches left and right, right and left, one side, then the other, whichever way you go. Just take your time. Feed that through because this is important. All right. Now watch. Hello you. And the door. That's why your hello you had to be upside down. All right. We close it and we open it. Isn't that cute? My goodness. Okay. So now what we'll do is attach our... Um, our chains. I'm going to use a little Tombow and I want one chain up higher than the other. I'm just going to put a little Tombow at the top here. 
of each of them. Just a little bit. And I, it doesn't matter. I just want one higher than the other. Just like that. It sounds like the kitty snuck into the craft room and she knows she's being bad. They're not allowed in my craft room, the kitties. All right, so that's perfect. See how one is higher than the other? Now I'm going to attach my gold circle with a glue dot. And I'm going to put this down here on, that, on the bottom. Let me get up in camera. On the bottom right here, right below that arrow, okay, in the white space. And I'm going to put my little gold dot right there, covering up enough on these lines here, see where there's no break. Okay, that, that closes it up. Let me show you. See where there's the break down in there? When you put that gold on it, it just finishes it. Isn't that beautiful? Then you pull this, or push it. Go the way the arrow goes. Push it up, hello you, push it down, close the door. I just love it. Okay, now, we're almost done with this card, guys, I promise. Um, but I get so excited with making a project with you and you all hanging in here with me. I don't know why my camera is getting a little cattywampus. Um, so now this is a perfect area for you to use the sides of your um, dimensionals. And I really encourage you to. These right here, these with the points, the smaller side, not this side that goes way up and way down. I'm talking this side right here. So I just take some and I secure down my little pull chain also on either side. See how nice that worked out? And let me do this. And again, if you can secure down the pull chain a little bit, that's great. If you can't, that's fine too. But I can. I can, I can touch it just a little bit. See? Okay, now, down here, you do want um, full-size, will full-size dimensionals get it, I do believe. Yes. Okay, right here, you want full-size dimensionals on the bottoms of your pull chain, okay? Now, on the rooftop, again, you want some sides. Let's see if I already have any. I've, I've made a bunch, so I've used a bunch. Yeah, we can use these. Good. So I found that one line can do, like if you cut it in half, you can get it right there. Isn't that perfect? This one might need to be just a tad shorter. Just right here. Oh, even shorter. That's nice. Okay. So with the glory about that is that you can just clip it and it, they just fall right into place. So that's all you need around the house to down here. I'm going to flip this over. Where's our little friend? Right here, our little squirrel. I'm going to use one of these that has, you know, because I just have it here on this sheet, no big deal. And then I'm going to use this right here. Um, no, I'm really not going to use that one because the tail hangs off. Okay, the tail is going to hang off, so I will use a full-size dimensional for the bottom here. But putting it more toward away from the tail, okay? Away from the tail. Just right there. And we're going to add him like he is sitting on our, our ledge here, but away from our clock. And see why we didn't need it on the tail? Okay, so you want to put the dimensionals over here by the nut in his face and his little legs. Oh, this is so cute. Look, isn't that adorable? Wouldn't you just love to get this card? Okay, now here we go. We're almost done, guys. I so appreciate you hanging in there with me. I know it was a long video, but when we do projects, I feel like it's important for you guys to see how long it takes me to put it together. When I break it down step by step, and um, 
I sure do appreciate you all hanging in here with me. It, this is not difficult to put together. It's all about that this little door right here. It's all about this mechanism right here. And at, isn't that cute? I swear. You know, it's just like doing that truck. That truck was just so much fun for me, too. Okay, here we go. Okay, everything's sticky. We're good. We don't want anything impinging on our um, mechanism back here. So now is the time to check your brad. Check everything back here. You don't want any sticky around this mechanism because it needs to be free free falling, free um, free of anything holding it back because you want the interaction. But then again, I popped everything up with dimensionals so this wasn't sliding right up against the card. So I've got my little background there. Isn't this cute? And here we go. Look at this, how it made this card just beautiful. Just like that. Let's center this up. And here we go. Ready? There's our card for today, guys. Our cuckoo clock card. I absolutely am in love with this interaction of this set. It couldn't have... I couldn't have been happier with the way both of them turned out. This adorable, adorable, and here we go. Thank you so much for watching. Please go to stampingintheValley.com. You can click on the big blue button, order any and all of your Stampin' Up! products, but if you don't want to go over to my website, Right down here is a Shop Now button, and right down here is the product list of everything that I use today. Thank you so much for watching, and happy crafting!